Hello everybody, Martin here and welcome to the last part of this series. I hope you're excited and in this part we will actually get to rendering and using our model in Blender. For the export configuration I have a setup here where I've created a similar structure to for example the typical PBR metal roughness preset. Only as you can see I've added here the opacity channel and the emissive as well. Actually, in case of this whole series, I don't really use either of these, but I like to have this set up for all my exports. Also, I use the OpenGL mode of normals here, because Blender is using the OpenGL engine to drive its rendering. So, I always make sure I have this converted map here plugged into an RGB output. And by the way, if you don't understand what I've just said, you can have a look at my Substance Painter Launchpad course. There is a free lesson actually at the course's main page and there you will learn how to create this whole setup I am using. And of course, we will only be exporting this texture set with the textures for the helmet, not the head. You can see that after the export we have this orange warning down here, but that just means some extra channels were not exported, simply because we are not using opacity or emission on this helmet. But it's not really a problem, so you can safely remove this message. Now jump back into Blender and here select your helmet and if you have the Node Wrangler add-on activated in the settings, you can just select the principled PSDF shader in Shader Editor and hit this magical shortcut, Ctrl Shift T, which will bring out this window and here just navigate to the folder where you've exported your textures and shift select them all. Open it up and see everything's been set up for you automatically all the textures plugged into their corresponding sockets, even the color spaces are set up correctly now. I love this add-on so much, it saved me a lot of time using this keyboard shortcut and several others you can use with it. Uh, you can go through the list in the preferences add-on section. Actually I have this original low poly helmet I've hidden previously, so let's hide the high poly one and just use this lower poly version that will be much more manageable later if you put this model into bigger scenes. To start off adding materials to the crest, just add a principled hair BSDF shader and here set the melanin to about 0.8 and melanin redness to 1 and you can add a bit of tint. That's good for now and to see the helmet a bit better we can even add a HDRI to the environment tab. Just download some from HDR Haven, something with a nice blue sky and bright sun, something like it's actually situated in Greece or some other country by the sea and you can find the link for the one I've used in the description. You can also by the way play around with the direction of the sunlight. If you go to this shader editor and world, you can click on the HDRI image that is plugged here and hit Ctrl T, which will put a mapping node into it. Then just play with the rotation of the environment in Z and thus you will change the angle where light is coming from. Nice. We can also start combing it now. So hit Ctrl Tab and jump into particle edit mode. Usually with a comb brush I just go to the front view and start pushing the hair to the sides a bit because no horse crest was ever perfectly straight and erect. So that always helps with making it look more natural. At this point I actually decided to switch from melanin concentration to direct coloring. Thing is, melanin concentration mode is very good for human hair, however these horse hair crests were often dyed, so this direct coloring works better for that. You can fiddle around with the settings and get to know the sliders here, uh, even make it black for example. Actually I don't like this back part here, it's a bit short for how the crest actually looked like, with this back bit often flowing down to the warrior's back. So you can go to the side view and first with the length tool make it longer, then also with the comb tool make it flow down a little bit better and overall comb the hair a bit more natural. Ha! Huh, you can see there is something happening here and the hair don't really start inside the crest. For that, well, I don't really offer an elaborate solution. Instead we can just push the geometry onto which we place the particles, scale it, rotate it and move it until it's inside of it. 
That's why we actually made it a separate geometry. Cool, this is looking better. I even like how it's a bit chaotic up here. And to help the particles fit inside even better, you can go in and make it wider here. Also, to have the hair particles a bit smoother, don't forget to activate this B spline. At this point, it's also a good idea to create a camera and an angle you want to view the helmet from. For example, this one. Increase the height resolution to make the helmet fit. By the way, in the camera view, which you activate by hitting 0 on numpad, you can move around by using shift and semicolon key, which is right under your escape key. To speed up rendering, you can see me switching to GPU rendering mode here. It is good for these sorts of detailed texture models with high res textures. For that though, it's also good to increase the tile scale in the performance tab here. Finally, increase the samples and we are ready for our first render. I rotated the HDRI a bit more and then finally hit F12. Nice, this looks good I think. However, at this point I'm still aware that the helmet is plain boring bronze. I mean, bronze is never plain boring, don't take me wrong. But still, I really wanted to have some sort of black variation here. So that's why I started the process of filling this whole region, but slightly differently than before. So back in Substance Painter, let's unhide this black layer and activate the original paint layer where we fill this whole region here. You can discard the rest of the paint layers and on a whole new one start painting away this ugly sharp edge first. I don't really like how high it goes up here, so let's adjust this ugly sharp edge first. I'm painting with a hard brush and mirroring activated and as you can see even the lazy mouse option that you can activate with the shortcut D. Then, when you're done, to quickly get rid of the hard edge, I use this little trick. I add a blur filter above the paint layer that I just made, set it to some low value, and then add a warp filter above it, set to about 0.5. This way the edge becomes more random without you needing to paint anything. So I'm sorry that we painted it in previous chapters. And now let's put the darken layer above the noise layer and below the noise overlay. I think it looks better this way. Also set the blending mode to overlay. What I do now is I put this black layer on a special group and I will be masking only this group. So create a white mask for it. This way my underlying color fill will stay the same no matter what I do. I will only be cutting out parts from it on this group above. It's a nice non-destructive way of working, so that's why I like to use it. The idea was that I wanted to put the black away from this wave pattern and also from the spiral. Now if only there was somewhere a mask that would contain this wave decor. <laughs> yeah, of course we have that mask. It's up here in this height layer where we can simply just go in, right click on it and hit copy mask. Then paste this mask into my groups mask here and it copied all the mask layers from the height layer as well as the filters. We don't need most of these though, we actually only need to take this bottom layer where the wave pattern is and set it to subtract. This way it will poke a hole in the black layers mask and that's exactly what we wanted. I actually left the blur and warp filters on, they add a bit of randomness to the result, which is what I want as well. And since I have quite a bit of chaos in my naming here, let's name at least this group Black2. Why 2 you ask? Well, that's because we will create a new group now. To mask out the spiral using some curvature generator, I actually put this Black2 group into a yet another group named Black3. And on it, I again used white mask. If I added a curvature generator on the masking layers of the black 2 group, those might cause some chaos overriding the paint masks. So that's why I sometimes create several groups like this and stack them into each other. 
Finally, let's add the mentioned curvature generator, invert it, and it already looks quite nice. I actually like that it's not perfect with some black spilling here and there, uh, as well as being removed from the edges all around. But it only needs some hand masking, I think, removing some regions where I don't really think it works that well. So let's add a new paint layer above this and start painting. For example, I think the effect is too strong on the edges, so let's re-add the black here and also up here and on the back. Then we can hit X to switch to remove mode and paint away the color from the spiral. Uh, the dirt brush will actually be better for this. It gives it a bit more randomness. Let's also go through the masking layers on this original darken layer. I'm looking for a layer that has this annoying scratch here. Huh, this one is to blame. Well, I guess this is why one should always name all the layers so that you don't have to search through them like I do now. So let's take this layer and remove the scratch. And the last step will be to go around and remove the color from actual scratches wherever you see fit. For that, I added a special paint layer so that I can deactivate it later if I find I don't like it. Then, when I was happy with everything, I re-exported the textures and back in Blender had a look at the result in the render preview mode and then rendered it out in high resolution. I think with this black region now, it looks much more interesting. And with that, my friends, we've been able to take this helmet from the very beginning modeling phases to the final texturing in Substance Painter and rendering with Cycles. I really hope you enjoyed the series, that you've learned a lot. It basically shows the basic overview of how I make all my assets for Heroes of Bronze. I want to thank you now for your attention and one last time I will mention the heroesofbronze.com webpage where you will find more of my courses as well as some info about the project. Also the Patreon page where you can support the project financially if you like and lastly the huge Substance Painter Launchpad course I released for cgboost.com where it's a good place to start learning Painter, I think. Or Blender, of course. One last thing, this course is and will remain free on YouTube. But still, if you want to download it as a whole and as a bonus get all the project and source files along with the Substance Painter and Blender project, you can go to my Gumroad or become a higher tier patron and get it there the links, of course, are in the description. But with that, let me say goodbye, my friends, and see you next time in some of my future tutorials. Martin out.